He was Prime Minister of Italy and European Commission President at an historic time for Europe. But did decisions taken during those mandates sow some of the seeds of the discontent and disunity that we're seeing in Europe today? Well, to discuss this, I'm with Romano Prodi here in his hometown, Bologna. Uh, many thanks for being with me on the programme. You've said your Europe is dead, the Europe you helped to build, which makes me ask, what Europe is alive now then? Well, you are taking me by emotion, not, you know, I am now talking with my heart, not with my brain. <laughs> In the Renaissance, we were leading, uh, the Italian states were leading, you know, it's not rhetoric. Bologna, Florence, uh, uh, Milan, uh, Genoa for banking and for technology, for military art, and Venice for traffic, you know. And there was the first globalization, the discovery of America. And, uh, you know, we didn't stick together. No Italian state was able to build the new ships, the caravans that were necessary for the new world. And Italy disappeared for four centuries from the world map. Now we are in the same situation. Germany, France, Italy, no one is big enough for the new globalization. Well, you were in power as European Commission president. You oversaw the expansion of the European Union, the largest expansion, single expansion in its history from 15 to 25 members. Did you back then realize that this could provoke all the problems we're seeing now? It was a triumph. Uh, uh, when, when in Dublin, we celebrated the 1st of May 2004, uh, the enlargement, it was the sense that Europe was a winner in history. Everybody had this sense. Then clearly, the old nationalist ideas uh, that were in some way, uh, let's say, uh, following uh, uh, the problems of uh, uh, the tensions of minorities, you know, the difficult border that you have. This came up with the new freedom of the East European countries, you know. And then in the second phase, you had the populistic uh, part. So you let the genie out of the bottle in some respects. So yes. if you could go back in time, knowing what you know now, what would you do differently when it comes to European uh, Union no, expansion? I should do the same because the alternative should be a tragedy. I think that uh, now you could have an incredible uneasy situation in all the Baltic states, in Poland, certainly in the former Yugoslavian countries. And uh, now you, you have problem, but you have problem in freedom. It was the only export of democracy never had in the world. We worked for years in adapting the rules, the law, uh, the working of the parliament, uh, the guarantee of democracy. This was the large event. This was not uh, the, the Iraqi war exporting democracy with the, with the weapons. There are many countries turning against the euro, the euro that you were also instrumental in introducing in Europe. Clearly, uh, it was conceived uh, like a step of, of, of a more united Europe. But then fear came. Europe has been dominated by fear in the last in, 10 years. In terms of the euro, there wasn't enough preparation as well. It was a first step of a common goal, a common enterprise. But then we stop it. And then the euro was without defense, without, you know, it's a, but the idea of going forward in the economic unity was shared by all the countries that entered the euro. Well, Germany, Germany now has tried and to move the narrative forward for Europe, and Chancellor Angela Merkel has now evoked the idea of a multi-speed or a two-speed Europe, something you've welcomed. But how specifically do you see 
a multi-speed Europe working? Will you not have an elite in the driving look, seat? I, I give you a concrete example. The Americans say NATO one day is a, a, a very nice thing, the other day is a problem. In any case, Europe must uh, work more for its own defense. And so the first uh, reinforced cooperation could be 10 European countries start slowly to put together the defense. But will you not then create a Europe where, which we have now in some respects, where there is an elite at the core, most probably Germany and the northern European states, who will be driving this project forwards? Well, uh, this is an evolution of the situation. When the power went for, from the supernatural body to the member states, let's say, from the Commission to the Council, clearly you open a competition among countries. And in the competition, the strong country became responsible. Are you satisfied with that situation? Is that how you see Europe progressing? Look, now it's clear that Germany is a leading country. As you have seen in, in the Greek case, there was not, let's say, a, a dialogue between Brussels and Athens, but be, between Berlin and Athens, because this is the reality. But what I think is that when you are a leader, like in Germany, you must put in the shoes of all the members. For those countries that don't buy in to this idea of Europe, a multi-speed Europe, the nationalist countries, what happens to them? We Should see. they leave? No. Well, first of all, they, are, they have no alternative like UK. Not only because they receive money from Europe, Poland has never flourished in all millennial history, never flourished like now, because of Poland, but because of Europe. And let's now focus on Italy, just briefly, because obviously Italy is in a bit of a mess. The party that you helped form, the Democratic Party, seems to be tearing itself apart, well, much yeah. like much of the left in Europe. The split of the Democratic Party is a, a, a big uh, signal of crisis. It's a gift to Beppe Grillo's Five Star Movement, is it of not? Of course, of course. Uh, what does this mean then for membership of the Euro for Italy? Because now, you know, three out of the four main parties in Italy are uh, Eurosceptic, uh, would like also to move out of the Eurozone. In Italy, I do hope, I do still hope that uh, even putting together the pieces of the uh, former Democrat, of the Democratic Party, let's say, and many of the other, even the right-wing parties, you have a majority in favor of Euro. Do you think the Euro was good for Italy? Because many Italians don't. My Euro, was, was something different from what happened. But I think that in any case, we couldn't stay out. When you say that the euro is damaging Italy, the economy, think that the balance of trade is positive for Italy. It's positive. We have, we have, we have a surplus mm -hmm. in the balance of trade, but so we are not in, an inefficient country. Uh, uh, the problem is, the political situation, but it's not a problem of the euro, it's a problem of uh, uh, a divided country on basic uh, uh, principle. And finally, though, let's bring the, the conversation back to Europe. So where do you see Europe in 10 years from now? Well, I go back to the Renaissance example. We are lost. We are lost. Together we win. It depends upon us. Romano Prodi. Many thanks. Thank you so much.